What's up Block fam? Welcome to the Blockhead Garage. So in today's video, we are doing an unboxing on the brand new Rurock Atlas 4.0. So there have been a couple other videos that have come out. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the feedback. Lots of big changes to this new helmet. I have not actually seen it in person yet. I have not unboxed it. So this is gonna be my first thoughts and reactions. We do have these guys here from Rurock. So we will be able to uh, hear any of the significant things that we need to go over just in case. I didn't want to skip over anything. So we invited them here to the Blockhead garage while they're over here in the US. And then we also did an interview with the head engineer, basically uh, responsible for a lot of the safety sound, like all the updates. Yeah, pretty much. And he's got a background in like McLaren, but McLaren, we'll go yeah. further into yeah, yeah. that here in just a second after we unbox and take a first look at this thing. So let's go ahead, roll intro, and then we'll get to uh, opening this thing up. Would you like to go ahead and do the honors of yeah. opening this thing up, showing the world? Oh, wow. Damn, man, that's like those little attentions to detail that you guys always get, right? You're in for a treat then. So yeah, matte black box with uh, gloss black touches there. Oh, wow. Yeah. I feel like it's an immersive experience. All right, so what do we got? Atlas 4.0, designed to disrupt. To lead the revolution and redefine motorcycle protection, Atlas 4.0 is here to save lives, to stand out and push your boundaries, driven by passion and built around our riders. This is protection re-engineered. Get started. So we got a QR code there. Okay, so you scan the QR code and it gives you pretty much everything you need to know right there. It's the whole 4.0 booklet basically, so everything you need to know. Obviously packaging is beautiful. First initial piece we're gonna pull out, we've got visor. I'm assuming that's the tinted. Got some kind of padding. So these go where the shockwave the earpieces fit, so oh, if okay. you don't have a comms unit or you have no shockwave and you want a little bit more of extra noise dampening, these fit inside on the ear holes where you'll see once you have a look at the padding. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and... All right, so this Rurock Atlas Core, so just the regular flat black. Previously, you guys have seen this one in many, many pictures. Liquid carbon, got the blockhead in the, the vent area there, Senna, all that stuff. So we're gonna basically be taking a lot of that stuff, moving it over. Initially, right off the bat, changes that I'm seeing, you've got less vents. I guess we can just go ahead and pull this one over here. In comparison, so you've got a vent there and a vent there on the 3.0, no vents on that one, but you do have the ability to open and close the one on the front here, whereas the previous one, you did not. Same visor, so you can basically take the visors from the 3.0 and use them on the 4. Perfect. Lots of changes like visibly right off the bat. Looks like the neck roll is redesigned entirely. Additional pieces that come looks like a little more down around the neck versus the previous one. Still doing a Fidlock, which absolutely love Fidlock. It's kind of funny whenever you see a bunch of people that have geared up, put their gloves on and they forgot to do their latch and then they have to take the gloves back off. But Fidlock is just as easy as click, done, back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to uh, Arch here so that we can be walked through. If you wanna start pulling some stuff apart. Yeah, the big upgrades that you're going to notice if you do have a three or a two and then go for the four is the internals the padding new materials completely redesigned fitment 2206 now on the atlas 4.0 which is the newest european regulation the big thing about this regulation is it's all to do with roll-off retention tests front and back so what we did with the atlas 4 is we improved the padding the fit but there's also when you when you put it on you'll feel a lot of a tighter snug around sort of like the back of the neck and the side of the face here. And this is essentially to keep this helmet locked in. So when you, it'll be a bit of a tighter entry point, but when you put it on, you're gonna feel like this helmet is is on. Okay. It's not gonna go anywhere. Multi-density layered foams inside the cheek pads in here with a new headliner, as you can see here. One of the biggest things that you'll notice as well is that we've got Rurok by Rion. Okay. Uh, so Rion is a company that we have worked with previously on our snow helmets, so if you're a one of our snow customers, you'll know that we have those in our snow headliners. As you can see here, this is the Rion, this blue stuff. So what I've been told is the consistency of this Rion, it's like suspended liquid particles that whenever like there's a quick impact against it, it, it so hardens. It's a, yeah. a non-Newtonian fluid. Okay. Uh, Sounds it's, fancy. It is fancy. <laughs> and, and the guys from Rion, they're super, super clever. The way that I sort of put it in layman's terms for people, I say if you ever have like a bowl of custard and you get your, your, uh, your spoon and you put it in the custard slowly, it just sinks in, right? Right. If you give it a little, a little <laughs> slap, it, it, it has some yeah, resistance, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. That's it's the same kind of thing. Obviously, much more <laughs> right. scientifically proven yeah. than custard. But 
it's the same kind of thing. It's that reactive on the harder the impact, right. the more it reacts. It also helps with the way that um, that these shapes have been designed. It's right. rotational and linear impact. So, you know, you can get MIPS in a helmet that is great for rotational impacts, but right. it has no linear protection. Hmm. Now, Rion with this headliner, it has linear and rotational impact. So a lot of helmet testing is done just straight off. But how often in a slide or a crash, whatever, do you hit an object straight on once? Yeah. It's, you know, you could go down the road and you're hitting a curve yeah. or you're, it can move each and every way. So that's why Rion and the new ECE 2206 certification is more of a real life protection. So you're not just, you know, hitting an anvil once. Okay, yeah, it withstands, it's safe, good. But this is for any kind of impact, whether you're rotational, linear, straight on over your scuffing, because they do uh, tests for anvils that are on a, an edge. So like if you just glance and blow. So they've completely redesigned the safety certifications to be more real life. And this Rion is one of the things that's helped us get to that EC2206 certification and also this new redesigned headliner. So you can obviously see here. Oh, big difference, yeah. At the back of the helmet here, that's where a lot of that difference you'll be feeling it right and then you get your high speeds you do your, your little shoulder checks you're just locked in and it's just a much more premium feeling super super comfortable still got the breathability with the with the fans so you've got the exhaust vent on the back still so the airflow is amazing but yeah that's uh, a little run through of the new 4.0 and, and what we've done with it so just as reference arch and i were talking day before yesterday i think and yeah. we were talking about some of the things that you feel like whenever you're in a helmet he rides so it's not one of these companies where like people are making the helmets and like they themselves don't ride what do you ride what's your uh what's your at home i've got an xsr 700 nice so a nice little uh it's basically like an mt07 yeah so you're gonna like the uh mt09 there over yeah. in bike week yeah absolutely all right so he's speaking from a place of experience and the example that you gave was like whenever you're going like 80 miles an hour and you have to glance over your shoulder yeah. to like change lanes the helmet isn't gonna like pull you get none of that movement it's just you you almost feel like it's you forget that it's on because obviously if you have an atlas you know the field of view is great oh huge yeah it's massive yeah your so, peripherals aren't really cut off and it's, yeah it's, so you've yeah. got your wide peripherals and then your, your little shoulder checks and it just you get no oh my helmet's coming this way or that way or yeah. you know you're you're hitting 1890 if you're on a public private road or whatever. Racetrack or yeah, Mexico. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but you don't get any of that. You're just locked in and it just feels so there. Yeah. But then that gives you the security to focus on everything else. The previous helmet was ECE R22-05. This one is ECE R22-06. So we're gonna hand you guys over real quick to Jay, introduce you to him, and he's going to explain what those differences are and how they have focused on more safety. Let's transition over to that real quick and then we'll come back and we'll pull some of the padding and stuff like that, try it on and go from there. Hey guys, I'm Jay. I'm the head of engineering at Rurock. My team at Rurock is responsible for the development of the products how we test it, getting it to market, get it certified. So ECE 2206, which we've been talking about here at Rurock, is a massive step change in helmet certification. The previous certification, 2205, focuses on one impact speed, which means that only a specific crash scenario is investigated. 2206 looks at two impact speeds, low speed and high speed, and those both affect riders in very different ways. Low speed impacts tend to be much more rotationally orientated, which can have an impact on brain injuries, and high speed impacts are the ones that transfer the most energy. 2206 looks at both of these, along with additional roll-off tests and rotational impact tests. So the Atlas IV was one of the first to market with this new certification, making it one of the safest helmets out there. So I'm often asked, why don't we have Snell rating on our helmets? Well, it comes down to the key difference between Snell and ECE 2206. The Snell certification is focused at track riding, focusing on the high speed impacts. ECE 2206 focuses on lower speed impacts, but also very low speed impacts, covering the more everyday ride. Snell certification demands a much stiffer helmet to withstand those high speed impacts, which means that on the lower speed impacts, it doesn't have as optimal a performance. With ECE being tuned for both, it means that no matter what speed you're doing, you are in a safe environment within that helmet. The other thing that Snell doesn't take into account is rotational impacts, and that is what causes the most significant brain damage. ECE 2206 has a particular focus on rotational impacts, which means that you get this holistic safety so that everyone is safe in every scenario in a crash. 
So with Atlas IV, we set out to ensure that we had a key focus on reducing wind noise from previous Atlas models. In order to do this, we had to focus on two key areas. Testing methodology to ensure that we knew where we were and where we needed to be, and also looking at our shell and liner development. So with the testing, we've developed a partnership with Silverstone Engineering Sports Hub using their state-of-the-art wind tunnel, developed our own binaural mannequin, which can measure sound intensity, and we've developed test methodologies in order to assess ourselves and our competitors and know exactly what aspects of the helmet we needed to tune. With our component development, we looked at the shell, making that more aerodynamic, reducing any unnecessary self-generated wind noise, but also looked at how we tune the liner around the ears. We introduced multi-density layered foam with acoustic inserts to ensure that we minimise the amount of sound that could transmit through from that externally generated noise through to the user's ear. And by encasing that around the ear, we ensured that nothing could get, in terms of sound, in from around the helmet. All right guys, so hopefully that information was very insightful. Big thanks to Jay, previous experience with McLaren racing. McLaren, yeah, uh, Dyson as well, he worked at Dyson. Oh wow, okay. So yeah, he's got a, he's got a good CV, he's been to some really, uh, worked at some great places and obviously we're lucky to have him awesome. on board with us too, so. A lot of credibility there. One of the things that Arch here did mention whenever he was talking about Snell, so a lot of you guys ask about Snell ratings, so all of those questions that he answered is actually questions that like I've seen from you guys in the community and I wanted to forward to Rurock to hopefully like give you guys better insight, give myself better insight as well into why they go after the certification and the rating that they do, why the design is the way that it is, and so hopefully that clarifies and helps to give you guys a better understanding. Fortnite as well, he's he does a really good video comparing the two, um, the 2206 and now, so that's that's worth a watch. You guys will notice we have a very large focus on the safety here. For uh, the previous helmet, there was a lot of questions regarding the safety, and so we really want to like let you guys know, like, hey, yeah, like this helmet is safe. It's up to these standards. It's not just a sticker that's put on there. Like, Rurock has to earn yeah. these ratings. It's all independent. You know, we send them out to to labs in Belgium and California to get all these certifications and stuff. So it's all out there for you guys to, to see. And yeah, as soon as we open the box with a little QR code, we're rock providing you guys how many pages? 50 what? Uh, 51, I believe. 51 pages yeah. of literature. Manual, yeah, yeah. The wind tunnel stuff that Jay mentioned, there are parts on the website that you can see uh, the actual wind tunnel, the setup of the, the head form that he talked about. All of that is on the website, so. Awesome. They're going to extreme lengths, basically like be transparent and make sure that you guys have trust. I've been wearing the helmet since the 1.0, probably like 10,000 miles on the 3.0 here. So that helmet, he was saying like the visor is really rough. That's because it gets used. It's had like lots of bugs on it. So yeah, like I, I've been wearing Rear Rock for a long time and to see them grow, especially in the motorcycle segment with the knowledge that they had coming from snow, but obviously motorcycle helmets are much different from the first one that they've had to this one, massive, massive changes. And one of the things that I always focus and emphasize about Rear Rock is they're a young company, they're hungry. And one of the things that they really like to do is listen to the consumer. So you guys, y'all posting down in the comments and all this stuff, like Rock goes through that stuff and y'all read them and they implement those changes. And so a lot of the stuff in the 4.0 is based on stuff that y'all have talked about, wanting those little finer details. And so Arch was going over a couple of them here. For example, uh, you see the, the ratchet here on the 3.0. So the strap and the foam part separate. People said, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you could get a little strap to keep it all in place so you're not getting twisted up when you're putting your helmet on. Even like the way that the fidlock straps have been altered, we've added that. Also with the, the pull tabs, a lot of people said that if you've got high miles on your helmet, then your emergency lettering is coming rubbed off. Mm -hmm. We've changed it to a more broided piece here, so that's going to stay. So it's these yeah. little details that people have mentioned and we've gone, yep, yeah, hear you, makes sense. Let's do it, let's get it done. So. Just little things like that that we're continually progressing but you know with other brands i don't know if they get that kind of feedback or you tell the guy at the store you get your helmet from he goes oh yeah you know, that information is going to go <laughs> nowhere not leave that building yeah right? like like how often are you actually in touch with the people that are making the changes in the product exactly in so. any of the motorcycle industry so like for a helmet something that is incredibly personal like this is this is so such a personal thing whenever you buy one to have a company actually paying attention i mean is awesome speaking of personal good segue to talk about sizing so the sizing yeah. has changed for, yes, for the 4.0 we still have the three shell sizes because there is a little bit of a different way that the helmet fits south because of that neck protection and that roll off protection it does just fit as a different helmet. So it's not just, you know, stuck a, a 4.0 sticker on. Right. 
and significant changes. Again, yeah. it's, it's, it's a completely different helmet, so then that comes with a completely different size and Right, so for the 3.0, I am an XL. I think I've been an XL since the 1.0, but with the 4.0, based on my measurements, uh, I am a 2X, so it did change for me. I was like right at that threshold. Before you place an order, if you're interested in getting the helmet, make sure you take your measurements, measure your head, and that's basically yeah. from like the crown, the crown just above your eyebrow to the back of your there's like that lump you have on the back of your head you want to take that around right, right. to the top you know and that's that's your measurement but so if you guys don't have like a cloth or a tailor's yeah. tape measure or something like that you can take a string you can take cloth fabric and then lay the, the fabric yeah. or the string down and measure the string yeah. it's kind of like a hack can we go ahead and pull some of the padding out you cool with that yeah, yeah. and we can uh yeah just show some of the differences okay so it's a very thorough video guys i know it's probably a longer video but like one of the things I wanted to do was be very, very thorough. It's like everything you need to know about the Rurock Atlas 4.0 and then like having a 3.0 to compare it to to show you guys like those updates. These are the new cheek pads. You'll notice it's a, a lot more firmer. That's that multi-density layers. Oh, wow. All right, so this is the one out of the 3.0. So like I said, <laughs> it's incredibly used. You guys can see like nice sweat marks, but just in terms of like, this feels like single foam, or as you said, this is what, what was it? Multi-density? That's correct, yeah. Take this headliner out. So there you can see the real one. Super cool. And we've added a zip into the headliner. Oh, no way. So if you did want to wash them, you guys in Florida especially. Oh yeah. You can see here the multi-density foams. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. So you can take these out and remove them to wash. So you're gonna get, you're not gonna wash any of the shape out of the, the cheek pads or anything if you do. Oh. If you wash them regularly as well, you can sort of almost run the risk of washing the shape out of the pads, so. So I have not ever seen any other manufacturer offer that, where you can actually just remove like the outside and keep the shape of the foam, like with that even being a worry. I'd, I'd never even thought yeah. about that, to be honest. That's okay. smart, so. that's very thoughtful. Just, yeah, yeah, just like I said, like the little things that we've been thinking of and feedback. All right guys, so here, you can see the Rion feels very tacky. <laughs> you don't have any snaps in the front of the headliner. They yeah, basically so. go up yeah, into the helmet instead of like uh, in. Pushing into this. Yeah, there's nothing intrusive here. It's yep. All the connections are here on the top and here on the sides. So. Yep. If you guys have ever worn a helmet that does have the, the snaps directly in line, you can, <laughs> you can really feel them especially if it doesn't fit you too well. Huge upgrade in padding, obviously focus on safety with the Rion redesigned EPS because the last one used to have the holes for yeah, the correct, extra yeah. vents. So we've got basically the holes in the front and the exhaust. And, vents, the yeah. exhaust. and as you can see here, we've got the, where the shock wave comes prefabricated. So super easy for installation. This is another thing that we've included just to make life easier. They've already laid the Velcro in there for you and there's oh, also the a little spot in the mic. Heads up for all of you that might not do the shockwave. Whenever you're riding, you might hear, like you're hitting bumps and stuff on the road, you might hear like some some of that on the road. So if you guys do experience that, just shove some cotton balls in there, you're good to go. Cool thing about it is it's magnetic so you don't have like these little tiny screws to have to worry about. Yeah. It magnetizes right in. So the visor system, yep. once again, still toolless, same as the 3.0. Yeah, same as the 3.0. The 3.0 visors will all fit with with 4.0, so awesome, super simple. Quarter turn, each side, and there you go. It does have the option for pin lock. For those of you that don't know what pin lock is, it's basically like a lens insert that goes along the inside of the visor that basically makes like a little insulated layer of air and it keeps the visor from fogging up, which is awesome for humid climates here in Florida after it rains, like during the summer, it's incredibly humid and you breathe and it fogs up and you can't see anything. One of the things you guys were talking about or that people have previously mentioned was the vents here being responsible for noise, but in your wind tunnel testing, you guys found yeah. that that actually so, wasn't the case, right? Yeah, so we had a, um, a mold that we, we made just in house, just a, like a temporary mold to try with and without for the wind testing. And so we, we chamfered this off and we, we filled in here and had it streamlined like this. Um, and the wind noise difference was minimal. You yeah. think the wind comes across here, you think it's gonna catch in here and sort of yeah. kick up because these vents here are closed off. So they're not they're not open vents on the side. They right. were on the 1.0. On the 1.0, yeah. The two, three, and now four, they're, they're closed. So yeah, that's just another thing that um, that we've taken the feedback on. And we, if it was a problem that would have need changing it would have been changed but they said no we've done all the data we've done the testing we've taken that in but it's not the the issue that we thought it might be or right. people would suggest well that's it awesome that you guys actually like you know did your research and looked into yeah. it yeah based yeah, on yeah. customers concern cool on that same note uh we were talking about these these inserts yeah and so these basically fit uh where the velcro is in there yeah so these go in with the velcro and then they just come in 
and sit in the ear, ear of the pads. They just stay in. And then when you put your pads in, they'll fill in over the top. Over the top and it just creates that little bit more sound proofing if, if you're after a really quiet helmet. But even without these, super, super quiet. It's awesome. much, much different. Like Jay said, we want to know where we're at and where we want to go. So we were pinpointing these vents weren't really any difference to the to the airflow but to the noise reduction it makes it a completely quiet shell i've obviously got to set this helmet up for moto vlogging maybe i'll do an updated video on that since a lot of you guys have asked me to do like an updated like 2022 moto vlog helmet setup so i'm gonna go ahead and get everything back together but we're gonna let them go ahead and get on their way they've got an incredibly busy schedule big thanks to vegas arch lauren thank you You're big thanks to Rock as always really appreciate it catch you guys in a bit <laughs> All right, guys, this video is running a little long. So rather than continuing doing the first ride in this one, we're going to go ahead and cut it here. But coming up, we're going to do a first ride and impressions video with the Rurock Atlas 4.0. It's going to be myself and Captain Anna. If you guys have kept up with all the other Rurock videos, that first ride and impressions, usually it's Captain Anna and I riding with the helmets, giving you guys our feedback. So that's going to be an incoming video. Also incoming video I have, we are going to be setting up the Rurock Atlas 4.0 with my new Motovlog helmet setup video. I haven't done one of these in a while so i'm going to basically show you guys how i attach my camera and we've got a brand new Santa 50s with the harman kardon sound sound by harman kardon we're going to do a review and install on this as well so we got helmet wall all set up as you guys can see pretty cool progression you know starting with the rurock atlas 1.0 and then this was the two and then this was the three so i've retired that one switching over to the four hope you guys have found this video insightful i hope we've included enough information to give you guys a lot of insight into the helmet but if there's any questions that you guys do have do me a favor be sure to post them down in the comments below i'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on the helmet down in the comments as well well, really looking forward to outfitting this thing with my Motovlog helmet setup and uh, going for a first ride. So hope you guys have enjoyed this one though. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button. Let's YouTube know that we're doing a good job. If you guys aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button as well. Hit the bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. That crimson, man. It looks amazing, don't it? <laughs> ride safe, stay vigilant. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.